Um, I am Timmy Pierce, and I am the Executive Director of the Historical Society, and on camera today is John Forschbeck, and we are with Lester Hauck in what I consider a little town. I know I shouldn't, but I live between Hauk Road and Hauksville Road, and this is Hauk Territory, and this is Lester Hauk. So good afternoon, Les, and uh, we'll start with your name, which I've already given, yeah. so there's no sense of repeating that, but when and where you were born. Within about a quarter of a mile of where I am right now, up on the hill a little further. No, I'm sorry. I was born in Baltimore. You were? Yes. Ah. My father and mother went down there to stay with uh, my with uh, my aunt, and it was on Palmer Avenue in Baltimore. Oh, okay. And uh, we had Dr. Wills to come around there and have help with the birth at home. No, no hospital. No hospital. Yeah. yeah. And uh, almost lost my sweetheart, Ruth, and not Ruth, uh, Virginia, Virginia Nagel. Out. Almost lost her because the boy was, she was only a little woman, five foot two, 110, and the baby was uh, nine pounds, 15 ounces. That was you? That was, no, that was, uh, that was my son. Oh, okay. I think he's mixing it up. Okay. Alrighty. Um, so you were born, you were born in Baltimore? Or here, I was born here. Yes. I, was, I was talking yeah. about my son. Your son, Eugene. right? Yeah. I was talking about him. Okay. Well, let's get back to you, and then we'll move on to your family. Okay. Um, I know you've just had a birthday, so your birthday date is what? February the twenty-first, nineteen twelve. So you were just ninety-seven yeah. years old. Uh -huh. And you've had quite a life, and most of it's been right in this area, right? Well, well, uh, yes, but I worked in New, 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 New Jersey for six years, and in Philadelphia for three years. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But when you were, um, to go back in the Hauk family, um, do you know when your ancestors came to the county? No, I don't know the date, I'm sorry to say. Okay. Um, but they obviously <coughs> got into this area. Mm -hmm. And if you'd like to chat a little bit about this area, um, where we are in relation to Carrollton and uh -huh. so on, um, and a town you were talking about uh, a while back, um, McGinnis, did you say? McGinnis, there was a distillery there, yes. That's a, that's the next <laughs> station going up from toward Westminster out of Carrollton. Okay. And down below for West, down below Carrollton is, is a Pat Patapsico. Right. It's the next station down on the Western Maryland Railway, right. or what was Western Maryland Railway. Right. <coughs> yeah. Excuse me. But that track is still <laughs> still in operation. Yeah, it's still in operation. It was out of out of service for, for some years because of the floods. Uh huh. Floods came down and washed it out for a couple of years and then they got it back to service again. Right. When you were a little boy, what were some of your first memories? as a child? Being scared of everything. <gasps> really? Yes, I had afraid to go to bed because I dream about big animals about to grab me. Oh! Yeah. Did you think they like lived under your bed or... I know a lot of kids do that, you know, they think they're... No, I didn't think of being under the bed exactly. I didn't think I was in bed when I was dreaming. I was dreaming. Yeah. 
I was afraid to go to bed because I was scared of the, the uh, nightmares that I was having. Aww. So I thank God that as years went by, things became better. That's good. Yeah. And you, and in the morning, there was something you you liked mornings, did you? Well, I think I told you before about the sunbeams that came yes. in and the uh, little dust in the air that I could see that. Right. And I felt like I'd like to climb up that uh, sunbeam. Up the sunbeam, right. Right. So the bedroom was a place of both scariness and then in the morning some yes. joy. Yes. Kind of like life, I guess. It is. It was. Yeah. Um, where did you go to elementary school? Brown School, up here on the corner, on uh, New Decker Road. Uh huh. Yeah. How okay. many rooms? Just one room. And how many classes? How many grades were there? Six, first to the sixth grade. Wow. And I had a lot of uh, my parents gave me a lot of education before I went to school. Uh -huh. And I could count to a hundred and I could uh, read a little bit and spell a little bit. And so the teacher was Mary Falvo and uh, my father and mother talked with her about the possibility of me uh, being promoted up to about the third grade. Wow, that's a fast start. Yeah, yeah. yeah. because I knew a whole lot of things already that my parents my parents had worked in Baltimore, and my dad was pretty well educated. He went to Strayer's Business College. Oh. Uh, yeah. Well, did he, did your dad farm out here? He far, yes, yes, he farmed a little bit here. He was, a, he went to Baltimore to uh, work in the Kansas car shops, and that was, that's railroad cars, heavy okay. work, but uh, they, uh, required after a while unions required that they have a physical examination so my father couldn't pass it having only one eye so he was laid off then he came back up here to the farm he already had bought a little ground from his father john elias help he bought uh, i guess about 15 or 20 acres from his father and he lost his eye. How did he lose his eye? He, had, he, was, he and his brothers had a little toy cannon and they put gunpowder in it and okay. they shut it off. It broke to pieces. Oh dear. And one of the pieces knocked his eye out. Oh. Yeah. And he had then a, a glass eye, did he? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, what kind of um, farm <laughs> animals did you all have? on the farm? Well, when we first got started, we had one horse and we had a couple of cows and about 15 or 20 chickens and that was it. And when you were um, a little boy and you were in school, you mentioned Mrs. Faubel and I am assuming that might be from the uh, Faubels of Faubelsburg? Um, possibly probably. could. I don't yeah. have any idea where she originated. Yeah. And Mary Fowell was her name. And did you have her until you got out of elementary school? Was no, she I had her elementary? through the sixth grade. And then the seventh grade, I went down to Wesley School, which was a two-room schoolhouse. Oh, moving up. Yeah, okay. the last bachelor was a teacher in the fourth through the seventh grade. And uh, uh, <coughs> uh, they met Mildred Smith. Mildred Smith was the elementary first through the third grade. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. And because you uh, you went right to third grade, you probably had her for a year, and then Mrs. Faubel, was that about right? <coughs> I went to Mrs. Faubel first. First, okay. And then I went to Elias Basler oh, okay. in the seventh grade. Got it. Alrighty. Um, when you were in school, what did you have favorite sports and games and so on that you liked to play? Oh, I would like to play a lot, of them, but I was too immature. I was uh, two or three years younger than any of my class classmates. See, I graduated from high school at age 15 because uh -huh. of, because my father and mother got me an early start. 
And where where did you go to high school? Westminster High School. Went yep. up on the train. <coughs> got the train, boarded the train at Carrollton. Rode huh. up on the train. It's hard for us to think about that now, thinking of taking a train, you know, to school. Um, at 11 years old. Yeah. Well, that was pretty adventuresome. Um, what what subjects did you like best in school? What classes? I like history quite well. English I didn't care for. Really? Right. Now you've done some writing though. Yes, I your, have. In your older years. Yeah, I was in the seventies. I did quite a lot of writing. Which is uh, is interesting um, because you have you have some some deep interest in a couple of subjects in particular. What what are those? Philosophy and and uh, and uh, theology. Yeah. 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 And um, going back a little bit, um, what did you do when you? when you got out of high school? When I finished high school, uh -huh. I tried to get a job. I couldn't get a job. I went all the way, walked all the way to Hampstead, Whoa. tried to get in the candy factory, and they said, no, do not hire anybody. And this was right in the beginning of the Great, great Depression. I see. 20, 28, 29, 30. So then I, I had, my parents and I, we had some chickens on the farm, and I loaded up some eggs and took to Baltimore and sold eggs in Baltimore from door to door. Uh-huh. Never made any money on it, really, but I was never a good businessman. <laughs> well, I understand you tried to sell that business to somebody, right? Yeah, Clint, Clint Richards offered to buy it, and, but I sold it to a, a man that I knew in Baltimore like real well. In the wholesale market, and then and then what did you go about doing after the egg business? Uh, well, I took an examination for civil service, and I got a job in the post office. And what did you do at well, that I was job? A, as a, uh, as a assistant mail carrier or a substitute mail carrier in the city of Westminster. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Did you ever tangle with any dogs? Or you know, everybody talks about dogs going after No, I didn't have mailmen. any trouble with dogs. <laughs> no. um, the trouble I had was with the assistant postmaster. Okay. <laughs> he, was, he was a slave driver. Uh, you know, you had to hit punch the clock. And you, could, you couldn't you had to learn the routes in the city on your own time. Oh. Yeah, you didn't. That get, doesn't seem quite right, does didn't it? Didn't get paid for that. No. And uh, I, you left the post office. Um, well, my father became quite ill, and he went to Church Home Hospital in Baltimore, and uh, they telephoned me that I better come down and see him because he's close to death. So I said to the postmaster, or assistant postmaster rather, can I go down? Well, he says, if you get somebody to take your place. That's compassionate, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, that was very, very generous of him. <laughs> well, there was four or five other young men near my age who were also working there, and they saw what happened. We all quit at the same time. You had a walkout, or right? Near, yeah, all nearly all oh. the same time. Did your dad die then? Yes, he died before oh. I got down to see him. Oh. Yeah, he died. Oh. Yeah. Well, he only lived to be 73, and my mother only lived to be 73. Oh. Yeah. Well, what, um, you didn't, did you go to a little bit of college, Les? One year to Western Maryland College, and then my dad was out of money to send me there, so. <coughs> I wasn't doing too well, so it was not, I was not college material, I was only 15 years old, yeah. so uh, I didn't uh, do so well. 
I guess my father would have found some way to help me get there if I'd have done well. <coughs> Excuse me. Sure. Um, what, um, after the eggs and after the post office, then what happened? Well, I met a, met a friend in selling butter and eggs. His name was Bill Getz. <coughs> and he said, if you ever get a civil service, <coughs> civil service rating, I believe I could get you an alcohol tax. Government service and alcohol tax. Uh -huh. So I got in touch with him, and sure enough, he got me into alcohol tax unit. Now they call it ATF alcohol, drug and firearm. But at that time, it was called alcohol tax. And what what did you do on that job? Was it investigative work or? No, not so much investigative work. We went to distilleries and breweries and what have you, and uh, looked at their records to see whether we thought they were legitimate or whether they might be peddling their wares independently, you know. You say, trying to avoid um, taxes. Yeah, yeah. Or, tax, yeah. tax is very high because it's, uh, alcohol is a, it was a, a, a luxury, you know, you don't have sure. to have alcohol. So they tax cigarettes and alcohol pretty high because they're unnecessary to keep us alive. All right. Um, when did you first marry? I ran away with my wife. <laughs> uh, I don't forget the date exactly, but I had just turned 20 years old and she just turned 17 and arrived about the age and went up to uh, Hartford County. So my parents or her parents wouldn't know anything about it, <laughs> hopefully. And, uh, and uh, then I told the minister at Wesley that I wanted to get married. And he said, well, you have to get married in the same uh, jurisdiction where you got your license, which was Harford County. Huh? So uh, he and a friend of mine that used to uh, sell uh, bread for the Hanover Steam Bakery, they sold bread delivered to the house for eight cents a loaf, huh? delivered to your house. Wow. So I got acquainted with him and he says, yes, I'll drive you to up in Harford County to get married if you would. So uh, our minister, Elmer Benson, and I and, and this friend of mine, uh, oh, what was his name, I'm trying to think now. They'll come to me in a moment. We, we got in the car one night and we went to Jarrettsville because our minister knew the minister up there, which was in Harford County. Raymond Hunter Brown was the man's name. What a was, distinguished was, name. Was the minister up there. And his wife played the organ a little bit and, and we stood up in front of the minister and, he pronounced his man and wife, and I prayed that it would last for, for a long time, and it did. It lasted 61 years till she died. That's quite something. And you had how many children? Four left? children, four, three boys and one girl. <laughs> and their, their names are? Eugene, Lester Eugene Houck, Raymond Errol Houck. Robert Allen Houck and the boy and the, the girl was Janet Elaine. And that family's given you some grandchildren. Yes. Thirteen grandchildren, about seventeen great grandchildren. Wow. Do you have any great greats? No. Nope. Not yet. I was right. hoping for one or two, but they <laughs> wow, yeah. that's amazing. I know you've been a long time member and... Uh, Wesley, <coughs> Wesley, Wesley United Methodist Church is. Right, yeah. 
lovely church. She was on the about uh, 11, 12 years old, I guess. And in your church experiences, um, as a youngster, you must have been in Sunday school to oh, start. Oh, yes, I was in Sunday school, taught Sunday <laughs> school a while, and some classes I became older, I taught the young women's and men's classes. Yeah. And you, you played a part in the, didn't you, in the building of the school, the Sunday school there at the church? Didn't you kind of help out on that too? You know, the, the building, the new building for the My school. father did more than I. You know, yeah. Yeah. Okay. See, I was a young man and he, uh, he, he had been teaching singing classes at many churches around and oh. one of the churches that he was impressed with was Forest Baptist Church. Oh. He liked that and my father could draw up plans for things and he drew up a set of plans to for Wesley Church, modern to a very, modified to a great extent, uh, the Forest Baptist Church. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Well, your father was a bit of a musician then, right? Oh yes, he was. He taught music classes around at several of the churches. Yeah. Oh. As a child, I rode around in the back of the car on the floor and. To the various churches <laughs> at times. Well, he taught some in Baltimore when he was down there. So his uh, reputation is, is, a, is a good uh, teacher and good musician followed him here to back to Carroll County. Wow. When he was laid off down there at the Canton Court House and came back and started farming again. Did he um, did he play an instrument too? Yes, he played a clarinet. And nearly everybody around here played in the Carrollton Band. Uh huh. And there was a Carrollton Band Hall oh, along the edge of the the railroad down there, just below where the bridge is. Oh, now. okay. Yeah, and that was the center of the social life around here then. The band hall, they had uh, dinners and parties and things there. And, and also, of course, the band practice. And I guess it, in that band, there was probably 15 or 18 wow. member, members from around the area. And many people played musical instruments in those days. My father played clarinet, and my uncle directed the band. He played a, a trumpet or trumpet. Uh, 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 he played a. Uh, uh, he got a, a cornet. Cornet. Okay. Cornet. Yeah. They were shorter than a trumpet was. Right. But the manner, the same manner, of design. Did your father, your father have um, brothers and sisters? Oh yes, he was the eldest of uh, four brothers. He was Jacob Hout, and then was, next was George Hout, and then John Hout, then Frank Hout, and then, uh, then there's two sisters there interspersed in between them. Rebecca married Noah Long, and uh, Elizabeth married Charlie Taylor. Oh. Ago. Huh. Do you have um, do you have any um, peers, you know, from friends from when you were in school that you grew up with that are still living less that you're in touch with? Um, because you've certainly put in the years and the mileage beautifully. No, I don't. I think they're all. Going over the Great Divide. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who were some of your special friends? Harvey Flater, I liked him, and he was from Mechanicsville. And he was two years older than I. Mm -hmm. And Howard Bonner was also from Gammer, or Mechanicsville, they call it sometimes. I liked him quite well. And then there was several in high school that I liked. They were in Coons. 
was one of my classmates. And he was a handsome man. But I mostly had girlfriends. <laughs> Well, you kept one girlfriend for 61 years, Virginia, yes, yes, right? I did. Yes, I did. Yes, and yes. then after Virginia died, yes. then what happened? Well, I started looking around again right away. <laughs> and you were how old then, Les? My age was 83 then. Okay. About, yeah, Virginia died, I think I was 83. Yeah. But I started looking around for another wife because my married life was very happy and I uh, thought I'd like to be married again. So I knew Ruth from quite a way back. She married a friend of mine who was in my choir when I used to teach the choir, lead the choir at Wesley Church. I had this friend of mine named, named uh, Give me a second. Okay. <laughs> Chester Rill. Okay. Chester Rill. And uh, one night to come to choir practice, he brought a beautiful young girl with him. And I thought, whew, she's a beauty. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Chester died. And about uh, uh, three months later, my wife Virginia died. Uh. And then I thought, I'll see if I can find Chester's wife. Because uh, she impressed me, she was a beauty. And, and I knew that she had taken care of him quite well, because he, had, he was ill for quite a while. And she took wonderful care of him. So I thought, I'll try to get that girl if I can. And I worked hard and I managed it too. God help me. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I understand you had to really work hard to secure Ruth, is yeah, that right? Yes, I did. She was 16 years younger than I and quite attractive and a lot of other men would like to have her too. She was going to the Lions Club over to, I can't think of the name of the place. Laytonsville, yeah. So uh, I used a little ruse to get over there. <laughs> I knew that uh, this, this, this husband was a minister, and uh, I, I had a minister that I liked a lot, the name of, of uh, what now? Uh, can't think of his name now. That's okay. And Ruth, Ruth was, did Ruth have a job at that time? Oh yes, she had a good job. She worked in a nice, a nice hospital over there as a secretary in that hospital. And it was only walking distance from where she lived. She had a home there in, in, in well, I can't think of the name now again. What was it, Ruthie? Where were you living, Ruth? I guess you didn't hear. Um, but you really, you really had to work, I guess, because she, oh, yeah. she, uh, she kind of liked that job, right? I pulled out all the stops to try to get her to, because she was quite a bit younger than I, sixteen years younger. So how long have you been married? Four, Fourteen years right now. Yeah. Good decision, right? Good, nearly, nearly 14, 14 years, the 25th of February. What, um, what are your wishes if you, if you had like Aladdin's lamp and you could make a wish for the county, for Carroll County and for the people of the county, what would your wish be, Lester? That the leadership of Carroll County would be godly people, people who have expressed love. 
That's been sort of your guiding principle through your life, hasn't it? Well, the last 20, 30 years it has, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was not a good man as a young, young middle-aged man. I was not a good man. Well, I've only known you a very short time and not terribly well, but um, when I first met you, I knew you were a good man, so whatever change occurred, you are a good man, and we've really enjoyed talking to you today. Thank you. God bless. Or can we cut back in, or? Yeah, we go. Okay, let's let's talk about sure. Carrollton then. All they right. can they yeah. can edit back yeah. in, I think. There's a mill where they use the water power to turn a big wheel. And it, uh, they had flour mills there. They could grind flour and also hominy. Hominy? Uh, yes, oh well, yes. Uh, you know what hominy oh, is? Oh, I love hominy, yeah. And hominy is just corn. Right. It's broken Swollen into corn, I call it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's mostly the hominy that we see is, is white. Uh -huh. But you could raise it. You could use yellow corn and make yeah. yellow hominy too. Was that was that mill, um, Lester, on on Reese Road? No, oh, no, no. Okay. No, it was on Carrollton. On Carrollton. Yeah, right in, right in Carrollton. There's a the little town of Carrollton right in there. Right. And there was a store there too, which preceded the one they have there now. It's no longer a store now either. But it was right along the river. Uh huh. And the one side of it was uh, the boundary of the Potemsico River, the, the east, west Potemsico River. And uh, uh, those stones went right down into the water that, that, that held the back of that, back of that uh, store. The store belonged to Ed Evans at that time when I was thinking about it back then. And I think I remember there was a robbery at reading some history about that store. No doubt there was, yes. That there was a robbery and um, they caught the, the fellows that did it. Um, uh -huh. But it was quite a chase through Carroll County, and uh -huh. I think it was a man named Valentine that uh -huh. uh, actually caught caught them. <laughs> um, anyway, it was. Uh, uh -huh. um, but what what else in Carrollton? What did they sell at that store, Les? What sort of goods? It was a general store. Where you could buy a pair of stockings, or you could buy. A ten pound of sugar if you wanted to, flour if you wanted, or all kinds of things. It was a general store. Yeah. Did they have a butcher? A, a meat butcher. counter? A meat counter too? Oh yes, they had a meat counter and a candy counter and so forth. When you were, when your dad was, and you were farming, did you have <coughs> beef ca cattle or? or or milking cows? Well, at first we got milking cows, and after my father died, we got beef cows instead. But I had a milking parlor and uh, electric milkers. Did you all I think they were? Hmm. More you'd like to tell about Carrollton? Because that was kind of. That must have been like your hub of activity because it's closest. Right? Yeah, it was, it was. Carrollton Van Hall was a social point in Carrollton. The Van Hall was, a, my Uncle John Hop was director of the band. They called it the Carrollton Quartet Band. There was probably about 60 or 18 members. And my uncle, both of my uncles played. Uncle Uncle George played a baritone horn, and my father played a clarinet, and Uncle John directed with a, with a cornet. And, and then there was the Taylor Brothers, who 
Aiden and Carol Taylor, they both played in the band, and quite a few others, you know, and Carol did New Decker, Fred New Decker, and mm -hmm. so forth. You used to, um, didn't you sing in the choir at the church, too? Oh, yes, I directed, sang in the choir, directed the choir after my father died. Yeah. Sort of inherited that job, you know. <laughs> My so, father taught me a little about music, so I directed the choir. For about how long did you do that? I guess uh, three or four years. Yeah. I don't know exactly. It's a very pretty church. Oh, it is. Uh, yeah. It's made of port deposit granite, some of the most enduring stone that there are, that there is. Yeah. My father selected that. And he also selected the windows for the church, and the people who installed the windows in the church stayed at our home. Uh, ah, yeah. they're, they're very beautiful. <laughs> they uh, are, then, yes. Very, very good artists that do those. Yeah. Um, anything else you'd like to, to share about your memories of the county? in the area, or the church? Yeah, I guess not, yeah. Okay. I, I remember when it burned down. And we it were, did? Yes. That was in the 20s, 1922, I think, or around that era. Wow. It's gone out the road, and my father says, look there, there our church is on fire. Oh! <gasps> yeah, you can see it from out here on top, they know. Oh. And then, uh, some of the older members wanted to rebuild, use the same stone that was in there before, which was local stone from the yes. quarry, we had a quarry on our farm down here. It did. Yeah, it had what my father used to call honeycomb stone. It was a soft stone and you could drive a nail into it. Oh. Yeah, I got some of it in the house there yet. Huh. Yeah. But they didn't go that route, right? Well, That's when they uh, got the granite my, from my father, uh, he uh, convinced some of the older people that we needed a new church. He wanted a new church. Yeah. So we, yeah. he helped design it, uh, patterned to a great extent to after the Forest Baptist Church where my father had to taught uh, music one time. He uh, taught music classes around the, many churches around the Crown County. Where, where, <clears throat> where was the, where is or was the Forest Baptist Church? Well, it's close to a forest area. Uh, there's a, a big restaurant over there that's quite famous. It's close to that. I'm, you know, I'm new enough to the county that I don't recognize some of the little towns that, you know, right, uh, right, in right. where they are. Um, I, I'm learning.